approaches on how to create uh, uh, using uh, track data. We have also had also to look at what would be the limitations. Of course, as of now, because the HIS is being uh, progressively being upgraded uh, based on your feedbacks. So looking at what are the current limitations of the event visualizer uh, app uh, using or uh, combine, uh, especially the enrollment data we won't be able to use in the event visualizer. And uh, of course, uh, this app is being uh, upgraded. It can be replaced at any time very soon, the new DHS releases. So, but as of now, uh, we shall uh, uh, use it as it is, as it, uh, developers are, very, are doing a great job to upgrade, uh, uh, to upgrade uh, the application. So in the event, so as I said, the event report yesterday, you covered uh, production of reports tables. You, you, you've learned how to save, download, add them to the dashboard. So this, this also will ap be applied to the events, uh, the, the charts that are developed through the event visualizer app. So we shall also cover that one, but mainly, uh, uh, hopefully allow me to organize this. Uh, Okay. 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 So in this, uh, looking at the event visualizer interface, it has actually uh, quite similar uh, features like the event report. But of course, as I said, in the event visualizer, uh, we won't have possibilities of uh, combining the anonymous data. But of course, we shall have a, a possibility to explore programs and program stage data. Uh, playing around with the dimensions, namely data elements, attributes, period, and organization unit, and also be able to, uh, to choose uh, chart types depending on uh, data I want to present. This, is, uh, this means like if let's say we, are, we want to, to do analysis in time to see the, the progress, to assess what has been the progress that has been made so far. This is where we want to decide which type of chart we want to use for our analysis. So the event visualizer are So let's now start by doing the event we are doing our practice. Our practice. Hello? Do you hear me? Yes. yes. Are you there? Yes. 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 Okay. So to access the event visualizer, uh, you all have your uh, DHIS uh, instance that has been shared to you, all of you guys, into different communications. So you have academy.demo.dhis2.org uh, slash tracker uh, underscore use demo. So that's where we're going to, to use. Uh, so as, as you always know, as you all know, uh, to use the HIS, you need to have uh, a username and password. So I'm logging in into my, using my username and password. So uh, from here, uh, uh, this is uh, the dashboard and you are familiar with this interface. So to access the event visualizer app from this uh, magic uh, uh, in your right corner, uh, magic uh, button, uh, where you can search apps, you're going to, to type in the event visualizer. So you can all see the, uh, the event visualizer. You click on it. After clicking on it, uh, uh, we wait a little bit, the network to load the interface.
So in, in this, uh, oh, so do you still see my screen? Yeah. What do you see? Yes, I can see. Yes. Uh, what do you see? I can see. Yeah, the event visualizer uh, is now open with a. Adolf, we can't hear you. Uh, okay, sorry, uh, I'm not sure what is happening with my laptop. Uh, let me use. Uh, let me use. Let me use uh, my colleague's laptop. Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well now. Okay, 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 okay. So uh, let me share again the. Uh, so let me share again the event viralizer. Uh, up, up. Okay, so do you see my screen? I hope you see the dashboard. So let me go back to, yes. to event visualizer. I click there. Uh, then from the event visualizer, as you can see, uh, we actually have three parts. So we have the left side part where you we have the possibility of selecting chart types where we can select data uh, by by choosing from the programs so which uh, programs we want to use for our event visualizer so we can also be able to select variables available and we can also choose periods also org units there are also a number of different data dimensions that has been set so late, uh, but for the sake of this uh, uh, presentation we are going to limit ourselves combining the three main dimensions. So, uh, but also on the left side, on the right side, you can see uh, there are uh, quite a number of tools to be used to manipulate and around with the, uh, the output from the, the data visualizer app of what we have set in the.
Halo. Yes, we can hear you now, but you uh, can't see the screen. I'm not sure what is happening with this uh, network. So let me share again the screen. Do you still see the screen? Yes. 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 So if, do you all see my screen now? I hope this time it's gonna be all right. Hello? Yes, we can see. Yes, we can see the screen now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, after uh, uh, this quick uh, uh, overview of the data visualizer interface, I hope you all understand how we're going to be using this, uh, we're going to be using this data visualizer app. We understood, understand the all buildings, uh, if I can say building blocks, different sections, tools, and how to, uh, to use them. So now what I want to do, we're going to go step by step, see practically how can we can exploit, we can use this event visualizer. Assume uh, we want to do our analysis, for example, uh, uh, do analysis trying to want to see, for example, people who have been vaccinated for AstraZeneca, probably those who have received those uh, primary dose, first dose and second dose, uh, for example, of this year. Uh, this is how we shall proceed. Uh, as I said, you want to see people who have been vaccinated for COVID. So looking at our uh, maybe first of all, let's choose uh, a chart type. Uh, we, as I said, we have different chart types, but for the sake of this demo, let me use uh, the first one, the default one. And as I said, I want to develop uh, to, custom, to, to create a chart combining people who have been vaccinated for AstraZeneca. So it means I'm going to use this vaccination registry and uh, the vaccination registry has a single stage and uh, I select the vaccination. My intention is to create a chart that uh, displaying people with the first dose and the second dose uh, of AstraZeneca. So this means I'm going to search through these uh, selected uh, uh, data items uh, looking for a dose. So the dose, we have them into number of dose, uh, dose number. So I select that one. I also, since I'm interested to see those who have been vaccinated for AstraZeneca, I should also uh, filter out uh, the name of the, the vaccine, the name of the vaccine. Uh, then I select that one. Uh, I'm interested to see of uh, this, the, which period do I, do I choose? If we go with regard to period, I think this has, you're you most familiar with it. We have, uh, we can have, use relative period or fixed period. We can also use start and end date. This is when we want to, to come up with our own uh, period. And uh, let's uh, keep the relative period, uh, the, the relative and fixed period. So with, with uh, and as I said, you want to, for example, to look people who have been uh, received first dose and second dose of AstraZeneca, then from here, it means instead of selecting 12 months, I'll be selecting, uh, I'll be selecting uh, this year, because I want to have the annual statistics and uh, which area for example i want to select this time let's say i may decide i want to see uh, the whole country if i want to see the whole country i can leave the whole country if i want to go to any level the, the, the vhs offers different uh, selection options 
so I can decide to use the user organization unit. This means while people while the system administrator creating my user account for this application, which level did he assign me to? So if I choose this one, it means uh, by default, the application is going to use uh, my user organization unit. If I choose this user subunit, so it means uh, this option, I will instruct the system to directly choose the, the first level below my user unit. If I choose uh, this user sub two units means uh, the second level under my uh, user, my organization unit. But there are also different possibilities of choosing different different possibilities to select org units by whether selecting levels or selecting org unit groups. But uh, let's say we want to use, as my user role is assigned to, uh, to the national level, let me select, uh, for example, uh, request the application to, to focus on two levels under my user unit. So I have to tick here. So this is uh, quite like few parameters that you need to produce your, your event chart. I hope you are following me now, right? Are you there? Yes, we follow you now. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. So after you set up all your parameters in your left side, and choosing on extracting the system, the, the chart type, you come to this uh, top uh, uh, toolbar, and then you have to click on, uh, on the update part. So clicking update, so it means the system is going to, to, to try to look at the, uh, what kind of graph is this? Okay. So if you look at uh, the graph, you see uh, the chart is actually uh, is actually displaying all vaccines that has been administered administered in all sub sub. Uh, by two units and my intention uh, as i started my my plan was to only focus on astrazeneca those people who have received first dose second dose of astrazeneca this uh, requires me to go back into the uh, data and filter out and filter out uh, doses that I want. So I want people who have received those one and those two. So as I select or I filter out what I want, the variables automatically populate in this, uh, in, uh, in, the, in this area. So then uh, I also have to filter out AstraZeneca as I, I mentioned before. So here among the list of all antigens administered in this uh, area, so I only want to display uh, or to look for AstraZeneca. People have received a first dose and second dose of AstraZeneca this year. So then I update my uh, so depending so depending on. Uh, uh, so depending on, uh, on the capacity of your server and the connection, the system might be fast or slow, uh, 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 might be fast or slow. So if you look at our chart, it doesn't really, uh, hmm? it's not, it's very difficult to, to, uh, to, to interpret. So DHIS uh, give you further options to better present and play around with the layouts of, uh, of your chart. So on top of this chart, you can see there is a layout uh, tool. So in this layout tool, you can say, uh, I want to, I want to, uh, I'm not able to see 
uh, period in that in category dimension, probably I want to see uh, OG units. Uh, I want to see OG units as data dimension. Oh, probably, and also I also want to see uh, because I know I have selected single dose or single antigen. I may say probably I want to have doses into series. So then after deciding so, I can easily also update uh, the application to see if I can have, uh, if I can say a, a, a very easy to interpret uh, chart. Uh, I'm sure you all familiar with this uh, arrows. This arrow allows you to uh, to hide a little bit the left side of the event visualizer for you to have a, a good view of the chart uh, produced. If you look at uh, our chart, this is a very nice chart that you can uh, produce. So we, have you seen, we, we have the chart displays, people have received first dose and second dose of AstraZeneca in this year. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if, when you look, it's very difficult. Okay, the chart is okay, but it's very difficult to interpret. So as I said in this top bar, gives you also continue to give you options, different options to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, to, to better present your chart. Let's say, uh, so the, the option, so here, apart from the layout, we have also the option tool, whereby you can also uh, play around with your chart to make it more, uh, uh, more, more, more informative. Let's say uh, we want to uh, to uh, we want to to hide like uh, uh, the empty rows where there's no data. We want to. Uh, we, we want to let's say to to sort this graph uh, based on uh, uh, low to high for example uh, there are quite a number of features that you can play around with also for example you want to uh, to give titles or names to this uh, uh, domain axis and range axis for example domain axis you can call it doses and uh, no, no. The 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 domain axis are uh, uh, location, and uh, the ranges are doses. And uh, probably you want also to give. Uh, let, so let's first of all update this one and see how it looks like. You see, after uh, after sorting, this is how our chart looks like by all locations. As you can see, uh, our uh, y-axis are doses and our domain axis are location. So this is one of uh, the options that maybe may decide to use while presenting your chart. And this helps you to see uh, uh, well, which uh, facility or which org unit is best performing because you are you have sorted out your org units from low to high so whatever is at the, the end it's a chamfron uh chamfron you see it's the the best performing uh, unit so that's one you can also uh from the ocean decide to to give a name to this chart uh, if you look downwards, downwards, do you do you see my screen? Hello? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I just are you only two who are seeing my screen over there? So I can see there are quite a number of participants, but I can't hear you saying yes or no. Yes, huh? we can yes, we yes. can see the screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If I take a time yes to say no? yes, but not playing music, huh? Okay. 
So then downwards, you can see there is in the general section where you can easily uh, decide to hide legends. If I click hide legends, uh, then click update, the legends will disappear. If I say to if I decide to bring them back, I can just untick here. Yeah. And uh, I forgot to mention the very good things here. If, for example, you don't want to have uh, space between two, two bars, so you can also tick here from there. You, your bars in, in your, your bars are going to be close to each other. Uh, so you can still play around all, with all these uh, functionalities. But let's say they try to give uh, a name to our chat. You see, our name by default comes with the name uh, 2021 uh, is ZD1222 AstraZeneca. So we can decide to rename it as we want and and uh, call it uh, uh, okay. COVID uh, COVID nineteen uh, COVID nineteen uh, uh, people vaccinated. were vaccinated AstraZeneca. Huh? Let me probably add the prefix C19. I can also decide to hide subtitles and then uh, click update. As you can see or read from the, the chat title, the names, the name of my chart has been changed. The regions are still there because I, did, I have uh, brought it back. And uh, this is, uh, if I can say, so when you are done with your chart, of course, uh, you might be, uh, you, you, you might be uh, want to use it later on, uh, so you can decide to save it. So saving, you have to, from the favorite, to decide to save. This is the known uh, steps. These are known steps. So you save it. Maybe probably I call it uh, COVID-19. Uh, COVID-19. Uh, AstraZeneca. And I save. So it means Anytime, if I come back, can still trace back and find out and find and open up my, my chart. If I don't want to save it, they also DHS allows you to, or to download it for, let's say, you want to put it into a PowerPoint. You have a meeting somewhere, you are, you are meeting your uh, stakeholders, uh, supervisors, and whoever. So you want to use it into a PowerPoint, you can download. There are multiple options, whether you donate it as an image, as a PDF file, and so forth. Uh, download, let's say, let's download it with uh, as an image for our beautiful presentation. This is how it is going to look like. So uh, I know I've been talking too much, so I just want to hear from you if you have any feedback, comment, question before uh, I start uh, a new a, a new demo for you to better understand? If you don't, I can uh, quickly jump to the second one. But let's use this few minutes to hear from you guys. If you have uh, uh, you kept something or if you have anything an issue regarding to the steps. So to ask question, you raise your hand and we allow you to, to speak. 
if you understood everything, it will be okay for me. But if we still have somewhere where we can try to, exp uh, to explain a little bit, let me know. Hello, no question? I assume there's no question. Okay, I assume you all understood uh, this. Oh, let's see from the chat. How do you... How do you determine which data should be in rows and columns? Okay, thank you, Ivan. Uh, deciding whether you are putting this into rows and column, uh, it's, so it's, it depends on the kind of what you want to, to share. Because here, remember, we are not producing the chart for ourselves. So there, there might be a very needed information that has to be backed up by by facts so that goes to to columns so it, it, this is mostly dictated by the output you want to produce from the system that's what i can say okay thank you So I see, uh, so you should clap for yourself. I can hear and see that you have understood most of the steps. And also I'm very quite happy that you all uh, managed to follow uh, this uh, first demo, despite uh, constraints we faced, uh, internet connectivity connection issues we had. So let's say we want to, Uh, we want to uh, to do uh, another chat. For example, uh, assume we we are into the, the COVID surveillance, and probably want to to have to see uh, people with the positive results. For example. Who can tell me how to, when you are here, how do we start? Where do we start? Can someone probably uh, summarize this? I'm here. I'm not sure if you see my screen. Where should I start? Go to favorites and then open anyone. You say hit over so that you reset. Go to favorite. And then hit uh, a new to reset. Uh, I know. Uh, no. yeah. Okay, that's yeah. good. So thank you very much. So let's say I want to produce a chat. Of course, uh, not really, not 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 fo mm -hmm. focusing on vaccination. Rather, mm -hmm. look looking at people who have been tested and tested the negative, right, or positive. So what should I do? I first of all have to decide which chart type do I have to use. What will be the chart type? 
Can you say chat? So let's say uh, he's suggesting to use a pie chart. So then I want to see into COVID surveillance. Uh, 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 which, which, which stage do I look for? Lab result. So I look for lab results. So into lab results, uh, uh i want to to see what i want to see those who have been tested negative and positive okay. so i look for a uh, lab result uh, lab results a lab test results and then from here among the filters I should do what? I'm looking at those who have got negative results negative and positive, and positive, positive results. So let's say uh, the period. I'm also still interested to see data for this year and uh, organization unit. Let's say uh, do I have to keep all these ones or? Uh, you want me to change? With a yes, pie change. chart, I think you need to select one org you need. Okay, so let's say I select Lao as my org unit and update my app. What do you see? You have to change the layout so that it can show the categories. The category should be the lab results. Uh -huh. So then I go to where? To layout. I go to layout. And do what? <coughs> Bring the lab result to the category section. What is happening? Uh, the data is I huh? think we 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 filtered negative in the lab results. Uh -huh. Let's see. That will be the report. Let's see, we have in the lab results, we have a negative and positive. positive. Go to the layout and put, put uh, the period or the org unit in the series section. Maybe. Okay. It's done. Because you only have one negative, Maybe so it's very small. Any finding? You only have one negative out of uh, 1,000 something. So that's why you cannot really see it, I think. Okay. I think the graph is okay. I think it is reflect the same as the results. Yes, yes, yes. I was doing so because just to to try. So it's always good to try eh, uh, use as a request. But actually, uh, since we we have very few number of negative results, that's why you see our pie chart doesn't the the negative pie is very 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 uh, small, so you can't even know. So that's why it is. But if you have a micro, let's change to instead of maybe having, change the the period, the period, the period to last year. Let's let's keep everything and see if you have. Uh, Our our pie chart now. Change. 
changes, the color changes, right? So we want it to display all possible results and see at what proportion of uh, results Yes, thank you. Uh, well, I was asking you maybe if we change instead of the pie chart to change to a different. Chart. I know the results are the same. But... Uh, yes, thank you. Um, we were we were creating the pie chart. So my question: uh, How would it appear if we change to a different uh, chart type? Uh, so you want, want us to change the chart type, huh? So let's say if you click on any type of chart, and you click. Hello. Hello. I can see there are people who have asked when Bucks. What of the day is five bucks. Please remember to go to your Moodle. Please remember to go to your Moodle and uh, input the word of the day. Word of the day today is spike bucks.
Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so uh, sorry for the internet issues. So we are uh, now moving to the next item uh, of today's agenda, as we are looking at uh, the use of uh, of maps, the uh, uh, app to do analysis of this event and tracker data. Uh, allow me to share my, my, my screen again. So do you see my screen? Yes. Uh, Hello? Does this one again? Says right. Yes. Okay. So in this uh, second topic, we are going to look at, on how we can use the maps app, of course, to do uh, event layer, to use event layers and uh, track entity layers to call out uh, tracker data analysis. So starting by event layer, uh, we, we shall be looking at uh, how through the maps app, you can do uh, your event data uh, by starting describing the maps app for you to understand what are the, the key parameters to, to key features to use to, for you to configure all for you to instruct the system to produce the map for your, for, for your needs. We shall also discuss, of course, some limitations of the maps app. Uh, what is working, what is not working. And also we shall also have, uh, if I can say demo, step-by-step -step demo on how to uh, use the event data and track the entity data, uh, tracker data to, uh, to produce maps. So in this uh, uh, session, uh, I know map has uh, different features, but in different layers. But in this session, using dealing with tracker data, we shall be looking at how to use the thematic layer, how to use the event layer, how to use the tracked entity layer, and also boundaries, uh, boundaries layer. So uh, so unlike the event reports, the event visualizer and the maps allows you to, of course, to, to combine aggregate, to use aggregate or tracker data, data of course, into a single map. Uh, this, this slide uh, tries to uh, show you how you can use the event layer, means that how you can plot your, your event data on a call net. It means uh, if you have been collecting the event data, also collecting the locations for that very specific event, uh, there you'll be able to produce the, uh, the maps using the event layer. But if you have been not collecting the event uh, uh, location or call net, uh, it won't be possible for you to produce. So the, the image you can look there, that's the the typically the image that we shall be producing very soon for you to see uh, the beauty of uh, this uh, DHIS maps app, specifically the event layer. We shall also be looking at on how you can establish uh, the relationship of, uh, of cases and contacts. Uh, but uh, uh, at this time, the, the maps has still has limitations, especially establishing the relationships between the contacts, the contact and the index cases, because uh, yeah, as of now, uh, the maps app doesn't allow you to to do like a contact tracing uh, by through the relationships uh, of uh, let's say let's say we have two programs and uh, probably one person is registered into contact 
program and while the index case is registered into case program so from there you can't dhis is not yet ready to support those contact tracing or relationships but for the relationships inside the same program we shall be able to uh, to produce them of course the thematics that the thematic area allows you to use the aggregates in two forms, whether using program indicators or using aggregate data elements within a tracker or event program. This is to, uh, if you want to use program indicators, of course you have to, uh, to have to have them uh, configured based on the definition you want. And uh, if there are data elements, as we are creating program programs and event reports, as you know, we have indicators and programs that we can rely on to produce data, of course, using thematic layers. So we, I won't talk about boundaries layer because the boundary layer is simply to, uh, to instruct to tell to the system, this is the area of my, my focus so that the system can automatically generate the boundaries based on, um, uh, based on uh, the area of interest. So let's start, I uh, hope you still see my screen. Uh, let's go back to our DHIS instance. I will start by reminding you how do we get uh, how do we get this uh, event level coordinates. So as I said, every time when you are reporting events, you you if you want to use uh, maps as a functionality, so you need to make sure that you are collecting the event uh, coordinates. Uh, let's take an example of uh, COVID case management uh, to see uh, how uh, we can, we can uh, exploit this event, how can we collect for you to, for, for, for me to remind you how to, where, where and when to collect these coordinates before we use them for, for maps. So let's go to this uh, event capture. Which is I know is this one? So you wait a little bit as the system is uh, bringing up the interface.
Excuse me, is it Adolf? We can't hear you. On your uh, data collection tool, if you haven't been collecting coordinates, so it won't be possible for you to produce uh, an event-based uh, map. So if you can see from my screen here, uh, we have actually uh, where we are collecting uh, coordinates for the events. So these coordinates are the ones we use, we rely on to produce, to produce the map. Uh, so if you haven't, so for the events that don't have these coordinates, don't, uh, we won't have them on, a, on our map. So let's now practically start, see how we can produce our, uh, our map based on our events on, on our data reported. So what do we do? We go back to, or from this search app, we look for the map. So we wait a little bit as the network is being uh, bring up what you want to see the interface. So from here, uh, let me start by explaining all, uh, the interface of this uh, maps app. If you look at uh, on your left, so you, you shall see different uh, uh, maps formats. So you can feel free to navigate from one to another depending on what, how you want your maps to look like. So these are all built-in uh, features. So you have also the, the button plus button here, where you, the button that you use to decide which layer do you use to produce your map. If you see the thematic area that I've been talking about, there is an event layer, thematic, is only for aggregate data. And we have the thematic for events, means that here we shall be uh, dealing only with the events related data. Tracked entities, it's, uh, it's where we, uh, is it, where we want to be dealing with the track, in, tracker data. And also have facility, uh, this is also another layer. For so if you want, let's for example to display facilities on your map, we have also boundaries. So these are mainly the layers that you shall be using in your daily uh, map production. Uh, if you have been uh, requested to do so. So apart from the layers, we have also uh, the if I can say the display zone. This display zone that's where you. Uh, you are going, the system is going to display uh, based, display the map you want based on the parameters are configured. So of course you can see from the top here, we have uh, under file where we can do our, we can save our map, uh, where we can refresh through this new, it means we are refreshing whatever that has been displayed to refresh or to, to start from fresh. Also, uh, be able to save, be able to rename, be able to share, and so forth, or delete. And there are also a uh, tool download that helps you to, uh, to download your, your map as, so as uh, when done with configurations. Let's take uh, any question up to now. Anybody with a question? Hello? Hello. Hello, 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 hello. Can you hear you? Can you hear you? Yes, continue. Where are you? Hello. Yes, do you hear me? No questions to continue? We, yes, continue. Yeah, please continue. We can hear you. Okay, good, good. Uh, so let's say we want to produce an event uh, map-based map. 
uh, whereby producing, for example, we want to see uh, people with the lab results, for example, of their COVID tests. So, of course, we shall start by creating boundaries. Let's say we want to, uh, we start by adding layer and then we add boundaries. Let's say we want to, uh, with boundaries we want, let's say we want to use second below boundaries. Uh, second below boundaries. Then after selecting, so there are different ways of selecting boundaries. Probably before jumping to there, let me unselect this one. So there are, there are multiple options. So you can decide, you can, you can select your boundaries by directly choosing among uh, this uh, drop down list or this list of all units that are here uh, displayed. You can um, insert the system to generate boundaries based on levels. So there we choose, uh, let's say district. If I say district and I click add layer, the system is going to, to, to display uh, boundaries based on this list. If I say, no, this one I don't want, I can delete it, remove it. And probably let's say I want to add boundaries based on, uh, let's say, a uh, group, uh, probably uh, based on a group of, uh, of what? Of uh, district, let's see if they are there. Let's see if they are, we do have shape file for them. But for those, if you don't have shape file that already imported, you may not have those boundaries, but those if those boundaries are already in the system, that, that shall be displayed directly. If you look here, the, our boundaries are there. Do you see my boundaries there? Let's change the look from there to this one. So you can see the boundaries are there uh, and so forth. Uh, so there are different ways of uh, selecting boundaries. Apart from groups, you can say, let's choose, for example, uh, two levels before under my user uh, org units. Then I click add boundaries. Let's see what comes up. Okay. After adding boundaries, uh, I have to. Uh, Add then the event, as I said. So adding the event, I have to select the event uh, layer. Then from here, I can choose which program do I want to use. As I say, I want to use COVID case-based surveillance. I choose that one. I want to see uh, people with the positive or raw results. Lovely best lab results. Uh, so the corner to be used to be able to map or to plot these uh, uh, events on the map. So of course I shall lie on the event location. So the event status, uh, uh, DHIS offers you also possibilities of choosing whether if you want all uh, reported events, if you want active events, completed, scheduled, overdue, skipped, so those are the possible uh, uh, filters that you can use depending on the on the on the output you want. So for the sake of this demo, let's keep all. Uh, of course, after selecting data and filters and whatever, so you need also to specify the period. Uh, for this demo, so let's for example use uh, this year as we've been using. Uh, so I have to select this here, for example. And then with regards to org unit, I select what? For org unit, I can select uh, uh, two levels uh, under my user unit. And uh, that's it. So it means if I select one of these options, so it means I can't select the left part of the organic list. So there are also filters. So I can also add filters. 
for example, uh, I want, as I say, I want lab results to be able to select, to filter positive or negative results. Let's say uh, here I'll be filtering from the list uh, uh, positive and uh, negative. I could also be uh, decide to use different, probably also use, for example, uh, a limit my filter based on the on gender, for example. Uh, here I can add, uh, instead of having this one, I can change and use, for example, gender. They have six in here, for example. I use uh, one of, uh, I uh, want to see female and men, for example. Then uh, I can also uh, change, play around with the with style. Uh, choose the color, for example, if I want to use this color, uh, then uh, uh, what else? So before maybe going too much, I can add layer and update. Let's see if I have something. So you see how my, 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 my maps looks like. So this is a map of all events reported in this uh, by uh, in the selected org units. So you see, as I zoom in or zoom out, so as I zoom in, when I zoom out, you see the, the system tends to combine all uh, to combine all uh, events into a very big uh, into a very big dot. But as I zoom in, so the system starts splitting out into uh, separating, focusing to trying to show me single events and where they are reported. Let's say if I go back and uh, want, for example, to, uh, let's say, to add more fancy thing, I can go back to edit layer, for example, and probably among filters, I can say, or instead of uh, filtering by gender, probably I keep, let me uh, first drop this one, and, uh, for example, use results, uh, lab results. I want to see uh, positive, for example. Uh, but among these positive, I just want to see, for example, uh, I want to see among the positive to see how many uh, how many were were female and how many were uh, men, and then I, from it means I wanna use uh, sex here, and then update layer. So it means uh, automatically the system will adjust uh, my map and present it into a different way with uh, some little bit fancy colors and whatever. So let's wait a little bit for the system to display. So if you look at the legend here, if you look at the legend here, you can, you can see that the system has added a little bit some fancy and colors to, to, be, to have like a, a you know, colors always to, talks much than words. So uh, you can see uh, if I zoom uh, in, you see the system, as I say, is trying to split, trying to, to plot events where they have been reported, but also still uh, keeping me like in a format of a pie chart showing me how much, uh, at what proportion is the female positive case and the male positive cases. So uh, when you are happy with uh, your map, so you can say, okay, I want to save it. I, uh, you can say, I want to 
uh, to save it for, for, for to use it later on. So you can come here and save and uh, probably call it uh, event map COVID-19 uh, event, event map. Uh, looking at uh, positive cases uh, started by by gender, for example. So if you have description, you can add description here for your, for your map, you save it, and that's it. So you can also, uh, next time you come back, you can rename it, you can share it, you can add it to dashboard. So there are different ways of doing so. So you can also download it. This is the generally, uh, if I can say in general, the, the data analysis using, uh, using event data. Uh, so this is generally uh, the, the major features of uh, the, 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 the maps app uh, with regards to uh, doing data analysis, tracker-related data analysis. So the key things to, to note here is to know how to manipulate these events and systematic area. Uh, in the boundary layer. So we haven't covered facility layer, but this one you can try it to our own. So if you don't have any other question, I can directly go to uh, and show you how you can uh, use the, uh, the tract entity layer. Any question? So, I assume there is no question. So I can. There are questions. There are questions. The there are questions in the chat. Uh huh. It's like questions I was asking in the chat. Okay. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Okay. Let me see. So if you want to add an external map, how to do that, please? So if you want to do a, an, external, uh, an, an external map, as I said, let me clear yeah, this one. So if you, if you look at uh, my screen here, this, uh, these are possible uh, maps in, the, in what I can call uh, already Connected to uh, connected to uh, DHIS uh, uh, GIS GIS maps. So there are all, all this OSM detailed map. There is this road being road. So there is this. Uh, so there are, these are only supported external maps. But if you want to do your own mapping, so there are, you can still export uh, this uh, event level data and probably do your, your map, put your map in your ArcGIS to GIS. Also the other possibility, uh, DHIS allows you to, through the APIs, to link up to any external map. I think that's more advanced, so you, you may not cover it now, but with DHIS through the API, you can still, uh, through the API, because uh, DHIS currently supporting is now the API allows you to interpolate with any uh, GIS uh, professional application for you to produce some uh, more advanced uh, maps. So with regards to what's, what's the question asked, what if I want to show two to three different stage in the same map? Okay, so the map, you know, map is just coloring. Huh? So let's say you, you've set your system to produce a map of this indicator. So 
you can't produce you can't produce a map with two different or you can you can't in a single map you only allow to have one indicator so you can't have two different indicators that's what i can say how do you tell how many how do you tell how many are male and how many are female in that okay let's see if i can bring back my my map Where is it? I don't know. Uh, COVID nineteen. So, with regards uh, being able to identify among these uh, these spread figures today, you see it's. You you can't only because here you are mapping uh you, you, you are mapping your let's see here you are mapping your 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 so the system is mapping all your events in this by trying to to style that means labeling. Uh, or showing how many are uh, the male, how many are female. So counting here, if you want to have a count, I haven't tried that one out, but you can still explore the possibility of, but looking at here, the system only simply displays the total of all uh, case that meet your selection filters criteria. But let me see if there are possibilities, or, but you can show the board. Showing table, let's see if there are possibilities of knowing how many are male, how many are female. Actually, because it's an event base, so it's not actually aggregated as such, it's being aggregated to be displayed. So you see, uh, apart from looking at the, uh, the graph and then the chart, no, no, the, the map, and be able to tell a proportionally how many what is big or small uh, but you can still explore and see uh, how you can uh, uh, produce that one what else can you have uh, gps coordinates especially on the map Enormous uh, on the thing. Okay. Can you have? Yes, but this is what I have this explained before starting. So you see, whether an event, if you are you are reporting an event and collect coordinates, those are the coordinates that we are relying on to to plot our cases or our events on the map. So if you don't collect the these coordinates so you won't be able to to produce this kind of maps so let's go uh, uh so you will start uh, continue to ask your questions on the slide so we can answer them from there so let's continue with the the next uh, exercise uh let's say you want to so to uh let's clear this one so you want to so to to use the tract entity. So here, the event is only mainly for, for the event related reports. So for the tracker entity means that refers to the use of uh, tracker programs. So let's here we are we select uh, so we are tracking because that's why you see here we are tracking a person, uh, tracking a person through which program. Let's say we are tracing a person, let's say uh, through uh, contact tracing, uh, which pro, uh, contact tracing uh, program status or let's say you want to see what are the relationship. Here, uh, if you read properly, they are, they are giving you a warning. This is an experimental feature. So it means uh, it may work as you want or not because it's still under construction, but it's therefore we are trying to promote it for you to collect more feedback on it. So feel free to 
to play around with it and share with us more and more feedback to make to make it to make sure that it's improved and respond to uh to, to our need and uh to profit this one so you have to click on this product entity relationship here as uh, i have explained it to you before this relationship uh, feature currently support relationship within the same program so if there are if there are relationships in with another program that those are relationships are not yet supported in this so uh reason why it's still uh, marking here that uh, you should uh, uh be aware that everything may, things may not go as you expected so because it's still under development uh, this is one of the limitations with this. Uh, of course, producing a map, you need to specify the period. Let's say for the tract entity, uh, they are giving you possibility of defining your, uh, your target period based on the enrollment of the tract entity. Let's say you want to produce a map of uh, cases reported or tract since, the, uh, since a given date to Today, for example, let's say we are we want to use uh, since last uh, let's say cases from uh, January 2020 to today. How uh, do I? Okay, okay, January 2020 today, for example, and. Uh, they want to know all units. Uh, I can use uh, select uh, se selected. Okay, so okay. Let's start with it. Lao, for example, uh, they want to know the style. Uh, let's here I can simply choose uh, only. I don't like red colors. Let me choose print and add layer so the system is going to so you see the system is telling me that there are no tracked entity that are responding to my um, selection criteria so which means i have to go back and fine tune my selection criteria uh probably the the the, the program i have selected don't have a tracked entity with coordinates let's let's go back to let's say Look, look into uh, vaccination. See if uh, we have collected cases. Where are we now? Oh. Okay. Is good. He has to know that we have uh, lost most of the time with the internet. So let maybe give me some quite few minutes. I won't take long to make sure that uh, uh, we do well this exercise. So maybe you have to select the COVID case based surveillance that has a track entity coordinate. Okay, let me this one or yeah, that's okay. So that one relationship, uh, that one period. Let me keep that one. Uh, all units. I can select. Uh, okay, I can select uh, this one. Select and set it. Oh. oh. Up to and uh, so let's see if I do update if I say I get something. Okay, let's see. Uh -huh. So uh this is what I was looking for. It means this map actually is displaying is displaying the index case and the contacts. 
So when you see there is an arrow pointing to uh, from the green, so the green, the green, the green is the uh, the index case, and the the small dark dark blue or something like that uh, is the contact. So this is, for example, how you can use this uh, tracker uh, data to be able to uh, to plot first of all your your, your cases. Uh, so it helps you to know where there is the hot, what we call the hot, hot spots map, and also be able to know uh, what are the index cases. Mm -hmm. So while, while you are registering your cases, you can easily say, okay, this 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 part, this case is a contact of this index case. So at the end, if you do though, if you collect your data in that in that way, you will be able to produce. Uh, these uh, these maps and be able to know if you are have to uh, to do file investigations to do a follow up whatever so you can see the map details has a very good uh, JS uh, features that can help you to do uh, uh, index uh, contact tracing when you are done you can easily uh, as I said, you can save, you can uh, uh, can save and give it a name. Um, COVID nineteen contact tracing. Uh huh. And then you save. What is it saying? Okay, you save it. And you can also download it. You can also do whatever you want. So uh, to better, okay, since um, uh, my time is over, so I stop from there. If there are quite a few questions, you can ask them. Otherwise, you can keep on uh, asking your questions from, uh, through Slack and then respond it from there. Thank you very much for your patience and uh, bearing with us throughout these connection issues that we've been facing. I hope the session has been so fruitful to you. Uh, otherwise, if you don't have any concern, uh, please feel free to share with us the feedback on uh, in Moodle. And also, uh, this, uh, uh, these two sessions have assignments uh, that are going to be uh, uploaded into the Moodle instance. Make sure you 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 try them out and also uh, submit you you uh, submit your results as required. Otherwise, this is the end of my expose. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, see you tomorrow or another time. Any question? Over. So if no question, I can give the floor to my colleague, uh, Jean-Paul, uh, to take you through how you can do also uh, a track-related data, event related data, but using program indicators uh, and uh, thematic layer. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 Hello.
Hello? Yes. Hello, dear participants. Hello, we are hearing you. Hello. Uh, okay. So I was saying that we are going to continue with the next presentation. This is John Paul. So it will be a session with uh, more practices. So please, uh, I want you to be more uh, active. Please let me know where you want more clarifications so that uh, I can just come back. So the topic will be uh, the analysis of tracker. Uh, 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 via program indicators using the data visualizer and maps. So let me share my screen. Uh, you see my screen? Okay. So uh, we will go through the following. We will try to define what's the program indicator. And then we will see a real way uh, how we obtain the program indicators. Then we will see the difference between the two types of uh, program indicators. We will see that we have uh, event and enrollment program indicators. And then we will see really how these program indicators can fit tracker data analysis gaps uh, we are facing now when we are using other visualization tools. Uh, we also, by the end of the presentation, we will uh, see uh, how uh, these uh, program indicators are, are used to visualize our um, different tracker data. Of course, of course using um, data elements or attributes. So um, the first thing is to understand really what's the program indicators. I'm sure that most of our participants, they know what is uh, data elements and um, uh, attributes. So program indicator is uh, a variable which is computed based on those either um, Data element or attributes or a constant just to help us to aggregate uh, individual data. That's what we call uh, a program indicator. Maybe uh, we will just understand more about uh, what's a data uh, program indicator using the, the following example. You might want to count or to create a, a variable which will count the number of those who have received uh, AstraZeneca as a vaccine, but all those who have received uh, those one. So the, that variable, which is program indicator, will help us to count. You see that for this example, we have um, individual persons who have received AstraZeneca as a vaccine. Uh, when we are using program indicator to help us to count all those who have received uh, AstraZeneca is vaccine, those one is those number. So it will help us to count and give us an output. Of course, uh, at this stage, uh, it's only, it doesn't mean that we can calculate this uh, output using on uh, program indicators because we can even calculate it uh, going through event reports using a uh, as an output style. Same thing, we can do it uh, by using the event visualizer uh, by displaying uh, uh, option sets. But as we are progressing, you will see that this program um, indicators, they offer us uh, more flexibility and help us to Visualize, um, help us to visualize uh, different uh, outputs 
which can be which can't be visualized when you are using either uh, event reports, um, event visualizer or maps. So we'll we'll see uh, oh, the next slides. Then uh, what are the, what are the limitations we may face when we are using either event reports? Event visualizers uh, or maps. You see, when, for example, you want to create an announcement uh, in event reports, uh, and maybe you, you choose pivot tables as a, a visualizer to type, you can't really create an announcement. Same thing when you are using uh, event visualizer and you want to create uh, an announcement. Uh, it's, it's, it's not really applicable for event visualizer, even for maps. But by using program indicators, it allows us to perform all those operations using data visualizer and maps. We will see more uh, when I will be demonstrating. And don't worry, you also will have time to practice. So, someone can ask uh, what. If it offers those flexibilities, why don't we really use uh, program indicators in everything when you want to do all kinds of uh, tracker data analysis? Of course, everything has um, uh, advantages and disadvantages. So, uh, some of the advantages of using program indicators is that it is what is well seen. It offers more flexibilities when you want to create kind of summaries uh, of events and alignment track of that. And also, uh, it uses um, it is used uh, in a tool which is familiar for most of NHS2 users. Those tools they are data visualizer and maps, and I'm sure most of users uh, currently they are familiar with those um, visualizer tools. That's why. Uh, even this uh, program uh, indicators, when it is used through these uh, data visualizers and maps, it's very easy for users to be familiar with um, using this kind of program indicators. The same thing uh, which is considered is advantage for program indicators that uh, it offers a number of advantages functionalities, especially when you are configuring this program um, and get us. First, it has uh, those uh, more analogic for the IB statement, relationship counts and difference uh, in dates, and other non mentioned here yeah, functionalities, which are considered as um, advantages. But also, it has some disadvantages, like you see, these program indicators they need uh, to be configured. So you see it is uh, somewhat time consuming when you compare it to those uh, options that you find in the different reports and uh, event visualizer, where in the flexibility for every user to just choose and filter the way he wants. The other thing is that users can define the requirements, but uh, it's very difficult to modify filters in real time because. As I, I said, this program, they, they have to be configured. And most of the time, they are configured by system administrators. So users will consume more than the configured by administrators when it comes to use the program indicators. Whereas for event reports, uh, visualizer, event layer, when you are using the maps, um, yeah, there is a flexibility for every user to filter in the way he wants, depending on the output he wants to display. Are we together? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. So may I continue? Sure. sure. Continue. Okay. Okay. So these are the types of uh, programming indicators. As you have seen during the introduction, um, we have two types of programming indicators. One is uh, event program indicators, the other one is alignment program indicators. Uh, for event program indicators, 
This is a program indicators which are evaluated by event within a particular program stage. And uh, we, uh, I will come back on the definition uh, when I will be demonstrating the practice. Uh, for enrollment program in cadres, this uh, uh, program in cadres evaluated across the entire enrollment within a particular program. You see, you may have a program like um, maybe COVID vaccination, and then uh, you have a uh, Allotment, and that allotment may have many stages, and each and every stage may have either one event or more events. So when you are using uh, the, the advantage of these program indicators that are evaluated across the entire allotment, meaning entire allotment means that it evaluates all stages. We will see in practice. So, dear participants, I want you to know this. Um, when we are using this uh, allotment uh, program indicators, when it's evaluating, when it is calculating, it uses the most recent event within the program stage. When it comes to, when in the case, one stage has uh, more than one repeated event. So uh, okay, I, I will just be giving an example for the coming uh, slides. Uh, here is an, an example which may help me to differentiate the event program indicator from the allotment uh, program indicator. You see, for example, this person, this uh, track, um, it's, it's, uh, it has two events. For the first events, this is the, uh, actually it has one stage, love request stage. You see for this first event, this, uh, we have uh, one love request. But also for the second event, you see that there is uh, another love request. So if, as you have seen, when it comes to be an event program in Keta, it's only, it, it counts a number of uh, event per state. You see uh, this definition for event program. That's, that's, that's why uh, we have said that when we use the event program in Keta, the value will be two because it will count the two events in this state. But when it comes to be an allotment program in Kepa, you will see that the value will be one because uh, these are repeated events. So it will, and we have said that when it comes, when there is a case, and this, when this uh, program case is counting, and which is to the a stage where it, where a stage which has more than one repeated event, it will count the most recent. Even. That's why uh, you, you find that we have allotment program uh, and get that by this one. Maybe we will we'll be demonstrating uh, through the system, uh, you will see the difference. Now, this is uh, another allotment indicator example. Yeah, I want just my uh, program indicator to calculate the number of hospitalized cases with the positive case, case result. You see that this indicator, this program indicator involves uh, a, 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 about three stages. There is hospitalization stage, there is a um, Lab request stage and there is a, a lab result stage. So we have said that when uh, it's an enrollment uh, program indicator, one of the features is that it will count the entire enrollment. It will go through all stages of, of the enrollment. You see, it's count, it is counting 
for the stage of stylization, we will consider this. Uh, and we have seen by uh, we have seen by definition that the program indicator is a variable which is computed based on either uh, attributes of data elements. You see that uh, for this uh, stage of stylization is counting this stylization. For lab request is counting uh, this PCR. I mean, this this lab request, and for the lab result is counting lab this uh, element of lab uh, testing results. So then you may see here the output. This is an example of the output, and we have said that in uh, as I have uh, requested to note something here. You see that for. At the stage of lab requests, here we have two same events which are repeat, repeated. So the fact that those two events are repeated, this allotment indicator is it will only count the most recent event. That's why you will see that we will have this output. Uh, we will see more in uh, our demonstrations. So, dear participants, um, I hope we are still together. If there is no questions, uh, you may allow me to proceed with uh, the live demonstrations. Is there any question before I proceed with demonstrations? No question. No, 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 no. Yes. Are we still together? Yes, we are together. Okay, okay. Yes. So let me. You lost your audio. Hello. 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 Do you hear me now? Or well, let's proceed with our demonstrations. Where well, we are going to start by visualizing uh, that uh, we are going just to create a pivot table. Uh, you
doing an event program and kept then uh, we proceed uh, by doing thing or by visualizing uh, program indicators. But I just want to start by showing you that we may visualize those program indicators even uh, by passing through the, the pivot table. Um, Just we will uh, we start by uh, this app, which is called Data Visualizer, and you see that you will see that when you open this app, which is called Data Visualizer, there are different options of visualizing data. Yeah, we, we, we are going to start by using visualize type, uh, uh, by visualizing our data using this type, which is uh, pivot table. And um, maybe uh, they choose uh, for data, I just want to choose, um, they choose maybe a program indicator because now we are dealing with program this type program uh, I choose here that type will be program indicator. Maybe uh, I want to use program which is called virtual registry. Uh, you will see, we will discuss the output. So here you will you 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 find that we have many programs. We have um, COVID vaccine. National registry, we have case based surveillance, we have uh, contact registrations and follow up. Let me start by choosing this COVID, uh, vaccination registry. And um, uh, for program indicator, we have these are all these are program indicators. I just want to display uh, under those with underlying conditions. So if you want, you see we have a list of uh, main uh, program indicators, but I may just like keywords here, a keyword. You see that uh, I, uh, among the long list, uh, I may remain with uh, what I want. So I want to display this on underlying conditions and the period uh, here, let me, Update, then I, I choose my period. Uh, let me choose maybe last six months. By default, it was uh, I uh, it was last last twelve months, but I may I want just to display that for last six months. Then I update. Then uh, what is remaining? Uh, I think uh, most of you uh, they are familiar with what we call dimensions. Uh, let me now uh, choose for organization units. I just want to choose organization units for organization units for level two here. I just, I mean, let me use this one. And uh, I update to see what will be the output. Now, uh, um let me organize my table to see what will happen uh, i just put period here okay i think you see the output hello yes we can see yes we can see them. Yes, we can see. So you, you see that uh, this underlying condition is a program indicator, which is helping me to visualize. And this is by, let me, let, let's say, by facility. So it's helping me uh, to visualize number of cases with underlying conditions by facility, by uh, period. You see that you may just, um, view what you want to view. Maybe uh, you see that for this uh, zero two, 
for from from Sal. They have had uh, 36 cases in May with underlying conditions. And you, uh, I just want you to observe one thing. You see that we have said that when um, we are using uh, allotment program indicators, when it comes to be a repeatable event, it only counts the most. You see, for example, here, when, where we have 36 or where we have 25. When we use the underlying conditions, uh, but which has been configured as an event program indicator, you will find that where there are more than one repeated event, all those repeated events will be counted. Uh, I just want you to observe this thing. You see that. Uh, you observe what I have here. Yeah, there's a lot of program indicator. I'm going to configure this. I'm going to just to change this uh, program indicator, which is underlying condition. Then I will just the event program indicator. Same uh, which is underlying conditions, but which has been configured as an event. You will see what will happen. I just want to change that. Here, yeah, uh, uh, it's program indicators, but I just want to use the one which has been configured as an event. You see, they are the same, but uh, I just want to change. Show you uh, the difference between the uh, event program indicator and uh, allotment program indicator. You will observe the change. This way, the bit may be the network. Okay, okay. Can someone uh, just uh, observe the, ch the, ch the changes? Just one person yes. to let me know if uh, you got the changes. Have you seen that uh, here I have uh, big numbers when you compare to what I have had when I have used the underlying condition as a program indicator, which is configured as allotment program indicator? Because for allotment program indicator, when it comes to calculate and when it sees that um, this event, the, the repeated event in the same stage, it, it doesn't count the two or the three same stages events it only counts the most recent events that's what i want you to understand is it okay hello yes yeah ah, okay okay so, so let me go to the second practice mm, now i'm going to create a chart using program indicators from different program stages because we have said that when you are using a lot program indicator it doesn't only count one stage it counts all stages uh within the same allotment so i just want to show you um uh, uh, let me just start um, by opening this that visualizer up. And uh, this time I will change so that you will see uh, this kind of visualization. Maybe I'm going to use a uh, line chart here. Let me see. Let me, yeah, let me use line charts and um, for, for data type, uh, let me use, uh, of course, program indicator. And for programs, as I have said, I want to use uh, COVID case based surveillance program. And uh, for indicators, I just want to show you. Uh, uh, this allotment program indicator can uh, you can be used to calculate uh, a variable which will uh, visualize more than one program indicator from different stages. So I will I will 
So just here I use three program indicators. One will be COVID symptom present. Let me write just a keyword. I just want to use all those three program indicators. COVID-19 symptom present, COVID-19 symptom present death, COVID-19 symptom present recovered. Then you will see that I, you will be able to display or to compare how many cases I have had with symptoms among those maybe or how many uh, cases I have had recovered, how many cases uh, with symptoms who died. Uh, as I need all those three program indicators, let me send them to the other side and I update. Maybe for the period, let me use this year. And uh, for org units, I will use, uh, let me up, update first. I don't know, for the period I should, uh, I just want to use this year. Then for org units, I want to use the, this uh, second level of units. Then we can see what, uh, how things are displayed. Maybe just organize it. Let me do this. Let me do this. I just want to see how. No. Not really. Let me be real this yeah. Okay. Uh, dear participants, I think you see uh, how by using this program indicator, uh, allotment program indicator, you can really visualize your your graphs by using different types of visualization. Here, I I try to use line graph, and uh, I'm comparing the three program indicators from different stages. As you see, uh, I have um. Uh, those with symptom present, those uh, actual, uh, this first line is with the symptom present. The second line is uh, those, who, with those who came with uh, symptoms, but they have been recovered. And this line is for those with, who have had um, symptoms and they died. And you, I think you see how uh, this program in Keta really helps and uh, it gives more flexibility, as you we have said uh, during the presentation of theories. So, dear participants, if you have some questions, um, uh, you may just ask. And um, if maybe there is no question, I just want to show you how we can turn. Maybe to how I can convert this chat to a pivot table. Uh, and you will see that um, this type of table will uh, cannot uh, will not be really very easy to create those kind of tables using either event uh, reports or event visualizer. Um, how to turn this uh, chart into the table? You just change here. You have seen that I have used line. Then I'm going to use this pivot table, then I update. I think you see very well how uh, there is a much flexibility when we are using this kind of program indicators uh, through this um, uh, data visualizer app. Are we together? Hello? Yes. Yes. Hello. Okay, okay. So please, uh, I think everyone have heard, um, you have downloaded Hello? Yeah, sir, you I have was to saying repeat. That you, you have to repeat. I just want to know if. Uh, yeah, I just want to know if everyone has a learner's guide for prog uh, 
uh, program indicators um, analysis. Hello? Yes, I, I, I... Yeah, or we can say, yes, I want you to do the first exercise. Okay. For 10 minutes, then you can, we'll come back. Okay. Okay, let's take five because we don't have time. Then uh, try to do the first exercise on the learner's guide. And then after five minutes, we'll come back. Uh, please, uh, those uh, when you have any challenge, please uh, let us know via Slack. Okay. Uh, uh, Jean, I think we have a hand from Tadis. No, it was just say that I have finished. Thank you, Monica. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, this cat is ready. So now the next uh, them uh, I, I just want you to. I just want to show you how we can use map and um, via map we can create uh, a map uh, using a program indicators and uh, I want just I just want to show uh, just want to show you uh, some um, outputs and I'm sure you will be uh, more interested and uh, through your practices, you will see that program indicators may give you some additional flexibilities. So let's shift uh, from data visualizer uh, up to the map. Uh, we'll start, I'm sure you have gone through all things regarding the map with Ado. Uh, I just want to create um, this map by using thematic layer and uh, um, for data items, I just want to use program indicator. Then for program, as I said, I just want to use COVID-19 case-based survey. Then for program indicator, you see that we have main program indicators. We have a list of uh, program indicators. Um, Uh, let me use. Let me choose um, suspected cases. Suspected cases. I just want to see if uh, I will find some. Suspected cases. Suspected cases. I just want to display by using map the, those suspected cases. I saw it somewhere. Suspected cases. Okay, these are this is the indicator I wanted. So uh, I add uh, I let me add the 
the layer. I just want to show you how you can add the layer, then you come back for edit. You just come back here, and then you can make some edits once you want to add something. So I want to choose periods. Here, my period will be relative, and uh, I just, I may just keep this last 12 months. And um, for periods, maybe let me change to timeline. And for org units, I will come back here to edit. Just make sure that, make sure that everything is saved. So for org units, um, you see the first level is the country, the second level, let me choose maybe for the second level of the units. Then I, I add my layer here. Then for filters, I may leave it. Then for style, you may choose one of uh, the available style. Uh, let me choose um, maybe this one. And uh, for colors, for, for colors, for regions, let me use single color regions, maybe. And uh, I think uh, now I'm done. So you see um, the objective was to display Let me add my regions here. Mm. Yeah, the objective was to display this um, this map. And remember that our indicator as uh, is the number of suspected COVID cases. So you see that um, the more you have, the, big, the, the bigger, the more you have uh, a high number of suspected cases. So you see that you may um, display this kind of um, program indicators, depending on what you want to visualize, using even these maps. Any question so far? No. Maybe in the in the learning guide, this map should be a timeline map. Can you show us that? A timeline map? Yeah. Okay. You, you you mean this this map should be timeline on the period on the period. You see okay, this here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is when you choose to be timeline. This this is how it looks like. And uh, when you choose timeline, maybe we, we uh, uh, let me show at the same time so that I will not come back on it. When you use this kind of timeline, you have other additional flexibility where you may play this, uh, the, uh, this map. You see that when you click here, you see? Uh, it shows you the evolution of cases over time. Let me start this. Um, of course, you, you, may, you may display this uh, when you want to display by map how cases have been uh, changed over time. Then I just want to play it again so that you will observe how the cases have been uh, increasing or decreasing or changing by facility over time. Let me start by November. 
uh, you will see that uh, cases have been increasing, increasing in one, uh, like here in March, you see that uh, cases, we have had many cases. So with uh, timeline, it helps you to see the evolution when you want to play with this kind of cards. And uh, you may also be able to download this card. You can download it if, um, and you can choose where your region to be. Then you can download the cards. You see, uh, um, this is the card. You can open it with maybe paint. Then you see here, there's the card. You can do what you want with this card after downloading. Okay. So we should go through many demonstrations. But due to the time constraint, I think um, maybe tomorrow we may have a few minutes to do some demonstrations um, before we proceed. Uh, I may maybe stop by here and then you, you just uh, ask some questions or some comments. Then um, I pass the floor to the more moderate of the session so that you may uh, continue. Is there any uh, any puts and comments? Okay, okay. So now the floor is uh, passed to the coordinator so that uh, she can proceed. Over. Thank you. Thank you, John, Paul, and uh, Adolf for the very good presentations today. I'm sure the participants had a lot to learn from them. Uh, just a kind reminder, we do have ass assessments from today's sessions. They're available on Moodle. Please do go to your Moodle and have your assessments done. And um, do provide your feedback as well for the day. Uh, once again, we'd like to ask to, uh, to would like to apologize for the technical interruptions, but we do appreciate your sticking in there and being available for the sessions, even with the interruptions. Yeah, so please do fill in your feedback. Uh, please do your assessments. Uh, tomorrow is day five the last day. So we'll be having an exam to be done tomorrow as well. So if you feel like you need to do some preparations, please do some preparations for that as well. Uh, the word of the day once again is uh, the word of the day once again is uh, spike vax. So please remember to register your attendance as well. Kindly go to your Moodle, go to attendance and input the word of the day, uh, input your feedback and do your assessments as well. Thank you once again for making time for this. Uh, for those who still have questions from today's sessions or yesterday's sessions or the day before or anything concerning DHIS2, please feel free to join uh, the, the Q&A session using the link that uh, Hadija shared on email. Uh, we'll all be there as facilitators and we'll be looking forward to your feedback, your questions and yeah. Other than that, we do wish you a good uh, evening.